Hi everyone and welcome to Image of the Day. So this is the IOTD series that we are currently conducting on the platform and I hope all of you are following this on a daily basis at 10 p.m. on the Unacademy YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Preeti Sharma and I'm your educator for pathology on this platform. So I hope you are also following the other classes which are being conducted on the app and I'll certainly brief you on that once we are done with the image. So there is again a series of images and a very short topic that we have and I hope just by looking Looking at this particular slide, you've been able to guess what are these cells. So definitely these are some kind of lymphoid cells and they are showing you these cytoplasmic hairy projections. So this is actually, yes, these are hairy cells. And if you have to go in for which disorder shows you these cells, that's a hairy cell leukemia. But before that, if you want to very nicely visualize these hairy projections, which is the best microscopy that one should actually go in for, and that is the phase contrast microscopy. So number one image, this is that of a hairy cell. Here you can see those thin projections which are very well appreciated on a phase contrast microscopy. And how would this patient present? Usually this is going to be an elderly patient and that patient is going to come to you with massive splenomegaly. So that's something that is usually mentioned in the question. A massive splenomegaly or a dragging sensation in the abdomen, which is definitely important. Now, when you go in for a bone marrow aspirate of this patient, repeating, when you go in for a bone marrow aspirate of this patient, do you get anything? No. The bone marrow aspirate gives us a dry tap. However, the bone marrow biopsy is going to give us this appearance that we see out here. That is seen on a bone marrow biopsy. Repeating, bone marrow aspirate gives us nothing. But if I change the question and ask you what does a bone marrow biopsy give us, it gives us the fried egg appearance. So I'll try to enumerate or I'll highlight the fried egg appearance. Do you see the cells have a white halo around it? The nucleus has a halo around it. Same over here, around every nucleus there's a white whitish halo just like the white color of a fried egg and that is how they've described it. So what is the immunohistochemistry that can be performed over here? So again when I say immunohistochemistry you've got brown color that comes to your mind first right. So there's a brown color that you have over here. What all stains can it be positive for? It can be positive for CD11C, it can be positive for CD25 and CD103. So basically one in probably every decade, 11, so in the series of 10s, in the series of 20s, in the series of 100s, we've got one one marker, 11C, 25 and CD103. Is there any new marker that has been identified? So yes, DBA44 is also a new marker that has been identified for hairy cell leukemia. However, which is one of the best markers that has uh, best markers that we say and that is anexin and which anexin is your question? Anexin 5 or anexin A1? So for hairy cell leukemia, it is A1. It is anexin A1. So repeating for all of you and yes, I suppose now it would be visible. The best one is anexin A1. How do you remember that? See guys, the way you write hairy cell leukemia, the way you write hairy cell leukemia, which alphabets come in it? A1 comes in it. So which is the best marker? It is anexin a1. Which is the other anexin that we study in pathology? There's probably, you know, anexin 5 also. And anexin 5 is the marker of apoptosis. And how do you learn that? In apoptosis, if you read the alphabets, it is AP, that is anexin penta, anexin penta or anexin panch. So AP is the anexin penta for apoptosis and anexin A1 is for hairy cell leukemia. All of these were immunohistochemical markers, CD markers, DBA44, anexin A1. But what's this guys? What is the special stain for hairy cell leukemia? The last one of the day. The special stain for hairy cell leukemia, this reddish color stain is nothing but TRAP. So what is TRAP? TRAP stands for tartarate resistant acid phosphatase. Tartarate resistant 
acid phosphatase is something which is positive as a special stain in hairy cell leukemia. So yes, these are the images, the number one hairy cells with the face contrast microscope, the fried egg appearance, the immunohistochemistry and the trap positivity, which is actually the end of the image of the day. And what scheduling are we following currently on the app is this, kickstart morning sessions at 7.45, postprandial boost at 3 p.m. on the YouTube channel. So the morning sessions are on the Unacademy app and the afternoon sessions are on the YouTube channel. You can see the dates. Apart from that, there's a very important marathon that is being conducted on 15th. So I want all of you to note, note the same 15th Independence Day special. You've got a marathon which is uh, starting at 6 o'clock, going up to 10 o'clock and it's on brain tumors. So I'll be taking the pathology aspect of it at 7 o'clock. This will be a special class series and we are really hoping to see all of you join the class live and benefit from the same. Thanks a lot for joining in for the image of the day. See you all again tomorrow at 10 o'clock with a similar such image. Have a great day.